everybody. Happy Wednesday. I'm thinking it's time for me to make a new trailer. It's got to be filled with all the wildscapes, right? <laughs> I've come a long way since I've done that trailer. Hey, Terry, how you doing today? Good. And hopefully I'm not blasting you. I remembered to change all my sound things. Nice. Hey, good morning, Philippa. I know it is very early for you. So thank you for joining us. And thank you for the kind words on my white. I go back to work on this since last week was um, so weird with the way the internet died as soon as I hit the live button. And then that night it died for like an hour and uh, turned out that there was an issue with the internet provider. So surprise, they fixed something and hopefully we are nice and stable. So what's happening in your artsy world today, Terry? Oh, hey, Andrea. Oh, Margaret. <laughs> up. Couldn't sleep. Good morning. Good early morning to you too. Well, here spring is starting to pop, and I've been working on that um, that junk journal. Um, uh oh, I forgot the word for it. With um, with your beautiful seashells and mermaids. Oh yeah, I, I'm just I'm I'm starting to really get into it, and just about the time I'm I'm really hooked probably be the time for me to start my next project <laughs> <laughs> i know how that goes <laughs> yeah i took a few days off of working on the wildscapes because i was thinking oh man you know am i getting tired of them you know they're all sort of running together maybe i should just set them aside for a few days and you know i don't know maybe i'm tired of green maybe i'm tired of doing them and then i went back and i'm like oh my gosh i love these i love these yeah. I love these i can't wait yeah. to do more <laughs> But I do have ideas on how to do them differently. I'm sorry, I was talking over you. Oh no, no, no! I, I was, I, I was just excited for you because it's, it's so nice when we totally fall in love with what we're doing. Yeah, you know, um, it, it, it's. I know we have, especially when it's a new idea and it's so fresh and it's so consuming, and then you know, then all of a sudden it becomes part of everyday life. Right. And, you know, to take a little break like that and come back and still be so excited about it. Yeah. It's and, you know, there's other things I want to do. And I'm starting to, like, play in my head with the idea of the seashore. And I did order some more yarn. I wasn't going to, but I did. But I know that, that the core of my work is going to be the wildscapes. I will do the seashore. And I've got some ideas for some other abstracts. But yeah who do we have here we've got Ooh, Sue, oh eat. sort of here are you having a hard morning yikes hi barbie hello all right so you want to do a swapper on the camera and i'll do a swap on my end and yeah on my side it's still showing all your fibers oh interesting yeah the intro is still going the intro so is the intro going for anybody else? I haven't got the music, but I've got the visual. Weird. All the fibers and things. Um, so I'm gonna say toodles and hop on over there so I can keep tra track of this rowdy crowd we have. <laughs> see y'all. Okay, so you see it live, you see both of us? Okay, you see both of us, all right. So Terry, you can swap and I am going to switch to my two things here and get back over here. I should eventually get easier, faster at this. Hey, um, who did I see pop in here soon? Andrea. Hello, I saw, Andrea. I saw a new name, something, oh, one stipple stitch. Hi. Oh. Welcome. I love seeing yes, somebody so new welcome. join us. Thank you for being here. So this is what I was trying to work on last week when the internet went weird. You feel pressure to act up for Terry? <laughs> 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 oh, and Andrea, you were so missed at the Zoom last week, but luckily you are going to be there next week. So I... I, one of the things that I have figured out about myself, um, I should have known this already, but, you know, I really am going to be trying to finish up projects so that when I start the next set of uh, wildscapes, I can maybe work on one or two things at a time rather than so many because I can realize how, how that's affecting my brain. And on this one, I want to get to the finish line. So I am going to 
add some more big beads and probably some drizzles today. And then uh, then will be time to do a whole lot of French knots and that gets kind of hard to, to see on this, but I don't know, that, that's where we're gonna go to start with now. So one stipple to stitch. Let us know a little bit about you and where are you and what is your favorite um, artsy thing to be doing at the moment. Hey, Lori and Sandy. And I'm just going to get started with, I've got these big, big old beads and I probably want to do some more of these little guys, but okay. I'm going to let Terry manage the comments. Hey, Joanne. And I am going to just start filling some of these spaces. I'm trying to find the comments. I refreshed the page because uh -oh. when, I went, when I went from StreamYard <laughs> to, to so YouTube, <laughs> um, I um, I got behind. I had I got a little lag there. Yeah. So I I went to refresh so that I I could um, be in real time. And oh, there we go. I got it now. Boy, and, I tell you what, you know, there's always something technologically speaking. I do not like the. These are the split needles. They are very easy to thread, but they are so lightweight and flimsy that I tend to um, create issues. It's not the needle's fault. It's definitely a Susan fault, but whatever. I saw your um, note in Patty's group today, Joanne. I'm dying to know about Patty's packaging. I bet it's exquisite. I'm starting to think about that. Mm. I'm, I'm looking for some... Uh, I want to get all the boxes right for my wildscapes um, because I'm being optimistic that they will will sell, or at least some of them will sell. But I'm starting to think about how I can up my packaging as well. Mm. It was Sandy. <laughs> Barbie says, I did not hide the comments. <laughs> yeah, you two together. I don't know. Sandy and Barbie, that's trouble, trouble, mm -hmm. trouble. I got them, though. Good, good. I want to page up and make sure um, that I haven't. So, okay. So one stipple to stitch. All right. So the ball's in your court. We would love to learn more about you. All right. This one's going to not lay easy. So maybe we need to balance it. Hey, Michelle. So were you away from home, Andrea, doing something fun, I hope? She said she didn't have Wi-Fi. Well, I tell you, you know, we were out just for like, I don't know, maybe an hour and a half, two hours. Um, getting to be old pros at what to do when that happens now. Yeah, that's right. Andrea Barbie joined us the other night and, and you know, all things considered, she was pretty well behaved. <laughs> okay, one stipple, two stitch. I am in Ontario, Canada. First, it's her first live stream. I'm knitting up a storm these days and was doing a lot of needlework up until last fall. Ah, oh, nice. Well, welcome. We are so happy to have you join us. We are a great, friendly, sometimes rowdy group. If it's rowdy, just look in the corner wherever Sandy and Barbie are. Although Margaret can get a little feisty sometimes, you know? You gotta watch out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you would panic with no Wi-Fi? Ah. I always have, you know, at least 10 books loaded up on my um my iPad. So I'm good. And then of course there's always something to stitch with. So that's fine. Yeah, I lived off grid with no Wi-Fi. It was in fact towards the end. Um I, I had a, 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 a satellite dish for television, uh -huh. and um, and it didn't always work. I certainly oh. <laughs> didn't because it was facing the wrong direction or something. And um, there was times that, you know, for a week or two at a time, that my phone didn't work. Oh, dear. Just, yeah, it was, it was it's, weird. It's not the lifestyle for everybody. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like where we are. We're, we're in the country, but we're not, like, completely saluted, Sa saluted, secure. Susan makes up words, just so you know. And Andrea says, we were in the Lake District, which is high and empty. 
Uh, there's no signal there. Um, Barbie, will you be joining us at the next Zoom? We hope so. Yeah. I like that somebody other than me asked the question. So it's just not me pressuring you, Barbie. See? See? Other and, people want you to be there. Uh, Renee H. Um, says, hi, uh, Stipple to Stip. I am just south of the border in Buffalo, New York. Ah. I think, is Renee been with us before? Yes, Renee has been with us before. Okay. Well, well I have goes. a bad memory for that stuff. <laughs> Did I, do I forget mushrooms? What do you mean, Michelle? Do I... Uh... Not- oh, the um, you were you did some um, oh, what, felted mushrooms. You did an experiment there. Yes, and I, I haven't forgotten uh, them, but I am not putting them on the current wildscapes. Um, I want to get better at them, and this this batch of wildscapes will be mushroom list, mushroom list. Oh, collect mushrooms as far as. Uh, oh. mushrooms like live mushrooms um i'm not quite sure i do not collect any kind of mushrooms so no i harvest mushrooms uh, or at least i i did i haven't done that since i've moved south though hey barbie um let's do an experiment okay before the next zoom you and i can go um on and figure out i i don't know what was happening with yours because you used the same link to get in um, on your phone as you did for the other things. So there, there's no reason mm-hmm. that you shouldn't have been able to see everything. Yep. Uh, what do we have here? Renee says that she lurks as she works. As, okay, I work as. I lurk as work ends. <laughs> I'm driving home. My gosh. <laughs> and um sandy says barbie you don't have to turn on the camera just the microphone it wasn't that it was that um for some reason she couldn't it 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 didn't connect properly so we'll experiment barbie just let me know when you have some time i've got time um later tonight or tomorrow most of tomorrow i'm gonna go get some cortisone shots in my bum knees and see if we can figure out what's happening with them tomorrow Never thought I'd say I can't wait to get my shot. Margaret said, it's lovely to meet you in face-to-face, Barbie. Yes. Hope you can make it next time. Absolutely. And Barbie, Barbie says that her assistant is morbidly afraid of mushrooms. Oh, wow. Oh, I do like to eat mushrooms, Michelle. Yep, I do like mushrooms. I did not like mushrooms before I married my husband. So 25 years ago, I would not have eaten mushrooms, but now I love mushrooms. I have to be in the mood, <laughs> you know? I, I really do. Um, well, I uh, like expensive mushrooms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, big surprise, right? Big surprise. Uh, chanterelles are, are quite um, yep. you know, expensive in certain circles. We like chanterelles and um, portobellas. My husband and, makes a great uh, chicken and mushrooms in um, a balsamic vinegar sauce that is really good. Ooh, stipple and stitch. What kind of mushrooms do you use to dye? And what color do they come out? Oh, you can get some great things from mushroom. Hats off to those of you that have the physical energy to do the dyeing. I've decided, you know, my younger self, yes, but... Sandy says, Barbie, my son loved mushrooms until school science class taught him what they were. Well, he's 40 and just now getting back to eating. (laughs) All they are is the flowers of an underground network of roots. They are what they call the fruiting bodies. They are awesome sauce. Yeah. And yeah, it, this this thinking about things that physically we can't we can't do. Well, I mean, I could physically do it, but it takes me so much longer. And really, um, been talking with another friend lately about where to spend our energy. You know, as we are 
you know, a generation of, in many cases here, of older makers, you know, how do we choose where to put our energy when we may not have, you know, 50 years of making ahead of us? Oh, boy. Yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, I get, I get on that swirl cage. Yeah. And that's kind of what, what I've been thinking about lately. And, you know, part of it has to do when we talk, and we've talked about this many times here, about um, de-stashing you know, and not keeping as much stuff because, you know, we don't want to be bogged down or what have you. Oh, where did I put my thread? Here we go. Um, but I think for me, it's if I want to get better at something, I mean, I, I didn't really start. I've been making art for maybe of some kind. I've been playing with art. Hey, Barbara, for, um, maybe a dozen years, but I didn't even start trying to sell my art until I was in my sixties. And so you kind of, um, and for me, that's my focus. It's not the focus for all older makers, but um, mm -hmm. I just, I'm thinking if I want to get better at my craft because I want to sell, and it would not be the same thing if I was just doing the experimental stuff because I just had the joy of making, then focusing is not necessarily a bad idea. Michelle said that she watched a video on velvet stitched mushrooms last night. Uh, there's some really, I have a whole Pinterest board of um, various uh, felting and fabric and fiber mushrooms. So if you go over to my Pinterest board, you can, um, you can look at that one. Uh, really impressive the way some of the people do the gills on the end of the mushrooms and you know, I'm just kind of letting it all simmer right now. I know that after these wildscapes, I'm going to go to the seashore for a little while, and then I will be working on mushrooms to add to wildscapes. I'm just following my heart. So, Barbara, um, I saw something you posted. I know I liked it. Uh, it was it a picture to 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 textile art or something, please tell us about it. And was it something that you did a video Ooh. on? I just remember seeing it on Facebook this morning. Margaret says that she knows of a mushroom that gives a lovely purple magenta dye. Ooh. Sounds like a bolete of some sort. They have some really beautiful blues and purples. What's really interesting is so many times when you go to dye something, the color of the item you're dye you're using to dye does not um, necessarily translate to what it what color it gives when it's you know had the of course the different board are gonna give you something different. It's like so, a chemical comp yeah. uh, reaction. Well, like oh, gonna... Margaret said that they don't have that particular mushroom in Australia. And um, Michelle said it was about 2010 when she got into mixed media. Yeah, I was still, you know, focused on my writing back then. And uh, I don't know. I'm just I'm, I'm actually kind of toying with the idea of writing, <clears throat> writing an article about um, makers over a certain age. <laughs> Barbara wanted to know, was it the picture of the Iceland volcanoes? Yes, that was which it. Is, which is peculiar because of what you're working on. <laughs> um, and uh, Joanne said that she really loves this piece. It reminds her of a doily. Ah, uh, yeah. I, you know, and I'm not sure it's, I've got enough fabric. I could stretch it over a, a 10 by 10 canvas, or I could pull it into a, um, 3D kind of sculpture, which is kind of what I'm thinking, but maybe it should just go on a canvas. I don't know. I'm I'm discovering things that go flat on the wall are not my most favorite things to create. So that's good to know, to learn about myself. Sandy says, hey there, any imaginary friends that love mushrooms? I see you over there. <laughs> uh, I I knew I know I have big pearls someplace, but I could not find them today. Uh, yeah, we'll just do a few more of these. And at one point, uh, when you were talking, um, uh oh, brain cramp. 
<laughs> Barbie had said that she was going to wear a Mardi Gras grass. Oh, a Mardi Gras uh, mask so that she... to our next event. And no. Was, well, as, as much saw, as it would be fun, you know. Um, you it, saw, we were we were very um, we were very restrained. We're very down to earth when it comes to our our, our moments of vanity. And you, but, you know, you know um, she could always wear a hat and sunglasses and pretend she's a movie star. She could. Yeah. She could indeed. Yeah. Give oh, her that Hollywood look. Ah, okay. I see. I see, Barbara. Let's see. I'm going to bring this down here. I mean, I, I don't pay. I'm not like paying super attention to where these beads are going because, you know, all the in-between spaces are going to be filled in with stuff. Oh, I forgot. I brought some um, netting out, too. I don't know if it's too creamy colored. For some reason, I just I like often mixing the, the white and the cream. But this time I'm thinking... That's it. It was the procreate. That's what grabbed me. Ooh. One of these days I'm going to procreate do a little bit more on my oh. procreate. So I, I'll go back and read Barbara's um, question or comment for everybody. Yes, that was the picture of the volcanoes. I wanted to do a spring equinox page in my art everyday journal and was watching the eruption live and thought the earth is always building and rebuilding. And then she says, so that, so that was an early attempt to master procreate. Now, not the first attempt, but close to the beginning. Nice. And yeah, I want to get better at the procreate, but that's on my list of things to practice. Barbie says, I follow this guy that keeps saltwater aquariums. I swear one of his... his one of the invasive anemones he has looks exactly like the part in the middle of, of your work. I know. Isn't this awesome? I I'm going to add more of this stuff. Um, this was, again, experimenting to see what the different, like, this is a very thin rat tail, and then this is some kind of a, I don't know, a glittery fiber. And this would be one of Susan's gray hairs, so we can take that out of there, <laughs> even though it sort of goes in. Speaking um, of which... Yes. There um in the in the intro your film there with the white. Yes. There is a hair wrapped around the 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 thing in the middle. Of course there is, you know? Yep. Um but I do I think it's time for me to do a new intro and I I was trying to think of um oh, here's here's questions for you guys and you guys do not you don't help me out as much as I want you to with the questions. But <laughs> I would like to know if I'm going, like if you were going to interview me, because I want to do a new, I've gotten a ton of new subscribers lately and I want to do a new, you know, getting to know Susan kind of video um, for all the new subscribers because it's just, it's like 2000 subscribers in the last month. Um, so for me, I need questions. So if you guys would tell me what, if you were going to interview me, what questions might you ask? Or uh, not just me, you know, you could, you know, if you're going to ask another um, artist, but I would love it if you would help me out and let me know, you know, what questions you might like me to answer in, because then I'm going to do an interview type style video. I, I think I, you just triggered a question in my head. Okay. Um, I, I think if I were a person that was watching um, your current style of expression I would probably want to know how you got inspired to deviate from um, traditional stitch, you know, um, like samplers and, and cruel and embroidery or something like uh, pattern. Just what made you get brave enough to go dimension? It's <laughs> a good question. I'll have to think about that one. I'm not sure. Hmm. I know what inspires the wildscapes, but to deviate from the norm, that's a really good question, Terry. Doggone it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Barbara, and I remember you saying, why is it that Apple capitalizes pencil? That's so crazy. Mm. 
Yeah, I think it's oh. that I, I couldn't achieve what I wanted because so much, I don't even have anything handy here because I got my screen up. I can't reach around the screen. So much of the uh, traditional samplers mm -hmm. um, are, is flat work, you know, surface embroidery, which is absolutely gorgeous. And I admire so much of it, but it didn't fulfill that, that need for me for, you know, it's like, okay, I know I want texture, but I want, I needed more. I needed to be able to go vertical. And I think that's what it was, is the need to add another dimension to the texture. And, and Sue Brown says, and or what caused the switch to fiber from the work with natural materials? That's a good question. Yeah. Um, I think some of that was... Oh, good point, Barbara. Yes, I will offer a link to the interview with Peg Robinson. That was a good one. Thank you. Um, I think I started thinking about permanence and mm. how with natural materials, you can't help. I mean, I got a loop I got to take out of here. I wasn't paying attention. Um, you know, there is, I mean, there is something about having um, art that is not permanent. And I, you know, I'll do that in the garden, you know, I'll, um, pile together logs and sticks and rocks to make something and knowing that it's not going to stay the same, either the weather's going to move it or the birds are going to move it. Um, but I think I wanted something that was going to have a lasting, I don't know, a lasting effect. And then once I started thinking like that, I started thinking about, well, how can I make you feel like you're looking mm. at natural elements? How can I give you that same feeling like you were out in nature without using, you know, something as obvious as a stick or a leaf or a pine cone or a real mushroom, you know, so you know what you're looking at. And so what, what I'm going for, and I think maybe this has to do with my, my writing background, because mm -hmm. as a writer, it was all about the feelings. Can I make you have a certain emotion? You know, can you read something of mine and feel something? Can I make you feel sad? Can I make you cry happy tears? You know, any of that kind of stuff. So with fiber, you know, if it's not so obvious that I'm creating a rolling green hill because I've painted a rolling green hill in a way that you're expecting to see it, and instead I've taken French knots and sculpted a green hill, can I make you feel like you're outside? Can I make you feel like you are running your fingers across the grass? And well, that was a good question because that I hadn't thought about that before, but I think that's what it is. I think it's got to be tied back to my writing. Yeah. And Barbara Clark said, it's probably the grazing principle. Uh, and you get into one pasture and you see something very interesting going on in the next pasture. So you graze over there and try it. There is that too. There's also, um, because I came from a book world and I loved making books and I loved doing um, the journals and things, there was a, a feeling that I belonged in a paper world. But I also felt like I felt kind of lost because I came to it late in the game and there were so many people that were already doing things. And, you know, I'll admit I wanted to stand out a little bit more. So it's like, what could I do that was different? Because story of my life has been, you know, how can I feel like I'm being seen? I've never felt like I was seen. And um, that's something I, if I did something different. I had a little bit more opportunity to be seen, if that makes any kind of sense. Mm. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, I'm sh the the extra subbies came because a couple people mentioned my find my playlist of finding free images in some Facebook groups, for which I'm very grateful. Um, and so there's been a lot of people coming in for that. And of course, the videos are old, and I'm not going to redo them. And things have changed, um, so those people might not stick around. But still, it's nice. But guess what? It came yeah. up in my YouTube feed the other day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're, they're all over the place again. And, you know, for a minute there, I think about doing some, I might do like a, a five minute, you know, hey, the videos are old, things have changed, you know, um, 
just, I don't know. But the, anything I do is going to send a different message to YouTube. So I'm trying not to uh, give the wrong message to YouTube so that they bring more people that are interested in my fiber art. But I'm just happy. I'm just happy. Philippa uh, says, here in New Zealand, the local website for selling handmade is called Felt, F-E-L-T. They use interview style of questions in Meet the Maker. Oh, Philippa, if you wouldn't mind sending me a link to that website, um, message me someplace. You know all the places I hang out. This one does not want to go through easily. There we go. I would love to go check it out. I do always collect questions. I think uh, Sandy's referring to the piece you're working on. She says that she can see that D Zeus, Dr. Zeus writing a story about the Who's Christmas Bash. <laughs> I would like to do one one of these days that that um, gives you the illusion of, of snow and then do one that's night. Mm. Yeah, with a little. I don't know. I, I'm thinking of when you say nighttime, I'm thinking of, you know, a wildscape with a lot of navy blues and. and, and yeah, I was thinking, colors. you know, dark, dark colors and then little tiny crystal beads, you know, for light. Um, Barbara, no, this was just I'm just doing a drizzle and I was fighting with this, the thing. I didn't have any more of this shiny yarn and I was fighting with it. So I didn't tie a knot on anything. Michelle said she really liked your cluster videos too. Ah, thank you. I did enjoy clusters. You could actually incorporate clusters in the type of work that you're doing now. Yeah. Well, and any of the things that you do off, um, like off the hoop, the detached stuff too can go onto a cluster. Ah, Roxy asks, hey, hello, Roxy. all my questions, uh, all my questions it is do, oh, I think she means something else, but she, her question is, do certain colors change your feelings while you're working on them? Absolutely. Ooh, that's a good question. Absolutely. Um, yeah, and I'll have to think about that a little bit more as to which colors do which ones, which feelings, but they absolutely change. Um, sort of like pink makes me feel like I've got fingernails on a chalkboard, but <laughs> pastels, it's funny as I'm thinking about seashore and underwater things now, I'm realizing I'm going to be using pastels and some pinks and corals and colors that I don't normally work with. And I suspect that's going to be a bit of a challenge for me because it's not my norm. Um, so that'll be good to challenge me, but I'll probably have, I'm starting to think about the really big wildscape that I want to do. And, uh, you know, I, I think um, that pink, I, I had a problem with pink up until maybe 40 or 50 years old. And I think it was because as a child, I was taught responsibility and responsible women don't have time for being pretty is the kind of the assumption I was taught. Oh, wow. You know, it, it's more important to be responsible and to be tough and strong than it is to be pretty. Pink is for people who, who are pretty. And, um, and of course, uh, of the whole family, I was the least uh, naturally elegant, shall we say. <laughs> <laughs> And so I was reminded constantly that it was not my strong point. So I was not comfortable with pink. Interesting. Um, but it, since going totally gray and everything, pink is, uh, um, I don't wear it all the time, but it's definitely my friend. I like like jewel colors, but it's the pastel pinks, pastel blues, mint greens that just didn't work for me. Oh, Sue Brown. Yes. Work with dark colors while you can still see them. Um, I need a lot of light now, no matter what color I'm working with. So I've got four lights around me. This yarn is not my friend for drizzles. So we'll see if we can get it through on this one. And then. And Sandy says, um, Roxy, color and texture both will affect my yeah. mood. Yep. And um, 
Barbara Clark says, uh, and me too, colors affect me totally. In fact, I'll start a journal page because I'm in the mood for a color. Yeah. And then she said, remembering quilting with black thread on dark fabric. Yes. Oh. All right. So now I have a drizzle that has a nasty little top here that doesn't look right. I don't know if you guys can really see that. It's wiggling around. It's, okay. So <laughs> it's not a normal top like the rest of them. So all I'm going to do is make a loop. And Margaret says, I often start a piece based on a color that I have to have at the time. Yeah, I, for me, I mean, it's, I usually grab three to five colors of a fiber that I can get kind of excited about. And that's what, um, what I start with. So I'm just going to make a loop here. This, this piece is all about texture. That's fine. And Roxy says, every time I use, I use orange, I feel overheated. Oh, that is too funny. Wow. I don't know that I have quite that extreme reaction. Maybe that's what I'll do with this other one. That's not quite, I don't, if they're not as shy, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I don't know that I'm falling out of love with drizzles, but I realize what I like best about drizzles is um, I like short fat ones. That was not where I meant to do that. Oh, well, we're going to. Barbie said that um, she got the message uh, about pinks being uh, for, you know, frou-frou girls. Uh, when she was growing up too. And then Barbara Clark said, I never liked orange until I took a workshop called Warriors of the Heart and was a member of an orange tribe. They were the indigenous people in the stories that we were acting out. Oh, interesting. Yeah. And orange, when, when you do chakras and different things like that, orange is uh, a grounding color. It, it, it's a... Um, it, it, it's about earth connection and everything. Um, it, it, uh, it's just above red, which is about, that's the root chakra, the one that uh, is it really at the base of things that keeps you tied to, to earth and earth related stuff. I like red. I like red a lot. Orange, um, I'm kind of neutral. As long as it's not like pumpkin orange, if it's got more of an earthy feel to it, all right, so I'm just going to make these drizzles. Over. I like coral. See, I'm you not know? a fan of coral, and I'm I'm really oh. trying to wrap my brain around the colors of under the sea because it's going to be colors like coral and well, salmon that that belong there. Yeah, I've got right now. Um, I'm doing coral in my um my ocean um uh journal thing. Yeah, and I've got corals and. Uh, I'm focusing on coral and turquoise and, and um, you know, like a golden brown, the sand color. Yeah. Wow. Um, so this one is just not cooperating. Why do you not want to go through? Oh, Roxy, that is too funny. Too oh. funny. Uh, Sandy says, I just love grunge and rusty things. Is that a mental illness coming on no <laughs> no it might be an iron deficiency <laughs> all right I, for some reason i like the looped drizzles here better so that's good to know all right so none it's of that fun. is working the way i thought it would because this yarn is not cooperating so let's change to something else huh, margaret says sandy it might mean that you need a little bit of oiling <laughs> Oh, yes, for sure. And, and Roxy's going, LOL, ha, ha, ha. Uh, oh, dear. So I had I had an 18. And Cindy uh, comes back with, Margaret, I love oil. <laughs> and Sue says, hmm, maybe I need to work with some orange today. She oh, Rossiana. Love Rossiana. Yes. Oh, yes. Definitely. And Barbie says, can you imagine growing up with the name Barbie and not liking pink? <laughs> yep. And when uh, I was a young mom, Mary Kay was the big deal. So everything was pink, pink and the pink Cadillac. And 
home interiors that I sold was pink, pink, pink. Everything was pink. Just no. And pink and black bathrooms. Oh, yeah. No, not for me. All right. All else fails. We'll go back to French knots, right? Barbara says orange is the second chakra. Yes. And it's the horror, they call it, the personal power center. So that's another thing related to orange is it's a personal power color. I love this fuzzy stuff, but I'm going to be smart. In the past, I have put this on early, so it's really going to dress this up. I don't know if you guys can see, but um, it's going to get tangled in anything I do. So it's definitely something to do at the tail end. All right, let's just take some of these blank spots and get some French knots in there. I used up, I was using this beautiful ice yarn that's got it's called rock star and it's got just a little bit of a sheen and it's just gorgeous for French knots. And then I wasn't paying attention. I was doing something else the other day and um, I used it all up. So I just ordered some uh -oh. more. I was like, whoops, whoops. Okay. I am definitely the French or the drizzles that are looped over. I like those so much better. Yeah. the uh, You know, I love a little bit of something fuzzy. Oh, I was going to check out my, my netting. All right. See, that'll work too. Ooh. Mm. Mm. Okay. Use this up and then I'll come back. Let's just do some French knots and then I'll come back. All right. So what other questions, any other interview questions you think I should address? Cause I think it's going to be fun. Um, I haven't done anything like that on YouTube in years. You okay, can see folks. this in pink. <laughs> I am thinking about doing a very large white piece and then sending it to a painter friend of mine who wants to paint one. And that Ooh. could be really, yeah, it could be really fun. Let me pull that all the way through. I would like to, you know, like paint it, but I'm not quite confident enough, but I would trust her to do it. So it's something we were talking about. Maybe for like a really big, I don't know. I have to figure out how I would do it. It would just be fun. This, this stuff takes so long, so long. And the other, I want to get the wildscapes done because the other thing is, you know, you guys, the embellisher, I've got to do some videos using the embellisher because it's so much fun and there are so many things to do. B it is. B isn't short for anything else, is it? Hmm. Don't give them too much freedom with giving you a nickname to start with a B. They'll probably come up with something crazy. Well, Sandy will come up with something crazy. Mm. Hey, Barbara, how you doing? Lovely to have you join us. Haven't seen you for a while over here. I see you elsewhere around the interwebs. Let's any more, anybody out there have more questions that as a newbie subby you'd want to know from, yeah. from Susan? Thank you, Terry. Something about her creative adventure. Yeah, wouldn't it be fun to have this all, have a big white piece that had been stitched and then um, painted? We will see. We'll see if we can pull it off. You know, it, interesting. Um, of course, you're you're getting to where you like a lot of um, silk and uh, and wool and natural fibers. But if you were to dye something that was already created, how would the different fibers take the dye? That would be interesting. It would be interesting. I don't know. It depends also on what you'd be doing. Patricia, hello. You just woke up from a nap. Well, I'm so happy to see you here. I don't know that you join the lives very often. I do see you around Facebook. What's your yeah. question, Sandy? Ooh, what is your favorite oh. texture? I bet most people could tell what my favorite texture is, right? <laughs> I don't know anymore. Maybe ah. once upon a time. My favorite is still the French knots. It absolutely is the French knots. Hummer's in the house. Hey, Hummer. Hi. <laughs> Barbie. <laughs> Go 
ahead, Sandy. What's your question? New or not? Yeah, she's questionable. Mm -hmm. I love it. Hey, Sherry. Oh, what a lovely house we have here. Yes, a friendly we have 23 coat. people on board for the ride. I do love the fuzzy stuff, too, although I do find um, it can be very tedious to stitch down in the ways that I want to, to use it, but it's worth it. I wish I liked a texture that didn't take so long, but, you know, French knots hold my heart. So, Sandy, what's your question? I may or may not choose to answer it. You know, I've got to consider the source. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Patricia. I, you know, it's, we're in, when we're, those of you that just came in, I'm thinking about doing a new video to introduce myself to new subscribers on my channel. And so I'm asking people for questions that they might have for me that I can address. Sandy says, Susan, if you added a stick from the yard, would you add moss stitches and grass and French knots so that it looked like the ground as you walked? Well, I have added sticks from the yard to wildscapes. And I do think when I add the, gra the French knots, it looks like grass that you're walking on or maybe um uh maybe moss so i'm not sure i guess i'm not quite sure what your question is because you've seen me do that i think barbara might have uh missed the, the conversation about how color affects us but she said when she logged on she looked at what you were working on and thought it was a marriage piece it could be it could be, you know, made into a sculpture, 3D sculpture, and for a centerpiece at a wedding. And Hummer wants to know if you're going to add some crystal. Yes, when I get to, um, when all the stitching is done, and so I think probably right now what I'm going to do is just a whole lot more French knots. Uh, when all the stitching is done, I will add a lot of little tiny crystals. Roxy put something on here, and it's, I think it says for Barbara, but maybe, um, I don't know if it's a question for you. Um, maybe it's a question for all of us. I like okay. this question for all of us. She says, how many domestic goddess chores do you do before you start to do crafts? LOL. Zero. Ah, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. Oh. Those are for after. I've done my art. Domestic goddess chores happen later, not first. You know, it's priorities. It's all about priorities. In my world, um, they are not the highest priority. I mean, my husband makes sure we have food in the house and food to eat. I make sure we have clean clothes. Um, we both make sure the dog is fed. You know, and there is... Um, there is a freedom that comes with a certain stage of life. You know, as a young mom, of course, you know, it was different. It was, you know, take care of the kids, get them off to school, get them to their various activities, you know, and then I had to fit writing and um, at that time, whatever other crafty things I was doing um, into little smaller pockets of time. And then uh, Barbara, Cabrera uh, says, I consider my crafting mostly crocheting um, is a chore. Yes. Zero. She doesn't, she doesn't. Yeah. Right for that, that chair next to the ball of yarn. Yeah. Um, now, Barbara Clark says, if you're talking to me, Roxy, a big zero <sighs> there, those are for some time, LOL. I even made a chart where I can give myself gold stars. It seems to be empty. Nothing motivates me there. <laughs> yep. And Sue Brown says, I find I do a little in the morning and a little before I go to bed. Otherwise, I'm in the studio, but not always crafting. Yeah. 
Oh, Hummer says, oh, now I've got goosebumps. I love crystals. I would, <laughs> love, I, I would have made a big bag for my wedding day. Yeah, I, I keep thinking at times about um, concentrating on some of the white pieces for weddings, but I think I'm just going to have to let them evolve because as soon as I start thinking about, oh, I could do this and I could make this to sell that, I get, um, it, it's not the right, it's not the right move for me. You get defiant. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sandy says, if I'm sitting too long, I make sure I have on a fuzzy socks. I get up and dust the floors while I walk. <laughs> that way I get exercise work and then sit down to craft again. Yep. There you go. I like that. Yeah. And uh, Roxy says, what is your favorite snack you can eat without making a mess or occupying your uh, or occupying your hands? Oh, see, you know, well, how can you eat without occupying your hands? But coffee, 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 coffee. <laughs> Lots of coffee. And Barbara Cabrera says, I refuse to spend my retirement cleaning house. Yeah. I always do the dishes. That's okay. Michelle has one. Here's a question for Susan. Where do you see your art going in another five years? I see it going large. Ooh. Um, I really, really want to uh explore going large <clears throat> i was talking with another fiber artist the other day and she was working on a piece that was um about 40 inches by 40 inches and i thought yep yeah, that's you know i'd like to do something that's about three by four feet but i would like to go even bigger and see what i could do and trying to figure out since i don't draw um, trying to figure out how I would grid something like that. And, and to <sighs> me, it, okay, here's my stumbling block on going large is I don't want to go large on the wall. I want to go large sculpturally. So the, you know, if I would go say maybe two by three feet long, but how could I go higher? You know, right now, um, yeah, I, I would have to figure out how I was going to stuff something. Like, I want to do hills that are really, really big hills. Wow. And, 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 but, you know, that gets into a whole other thing because you would have to use um, different fibers to achieve those heights. Well, you know, small you fibers need, don't. You need to be able to shape things. So if you have, um, oh. okay, so this is just some netting. So if you put a little bit of stuffing under it, then you have a small hill. But if you build, say you start with a, a base, you know, a cardboard or styrofoam base, and then you put your fiber over, or put your like fiber fill or something over it, and then you, you can get a hill that's even taller. So I don't know if I could go two by three. Yeah, wire is another thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm just kind of starting to think. Well, yeah, Sandy I, I says don't... she can see you displaying in the Smithsonian. Oh, aren't you sweet? Let's just get the stuff to sell out of the shop first. You know, that would be the nice thing. <laughs> Barbie co made a comment about the uh, the snacking thing. And she said, my best diet is to go to the clay studio. You're, you're not going to snack with clay on your hands, are you? That's true. <laughs> That's oh. true. Oh, my goodness, Roxy, you're asking the best questions. Okay. Uh, she says, what element or elements have you always wanted to add to your art but are not sure how to do it? So that actually, I actually have a question, an answer for that, because um, as I'm thinking, I told you I'm about going to the beach next, and I have some very delicate um uh, starfish and sand dollars mm. and I can couch them down, but I am very, very concerned about how to make sure that they're going, going to stay the way they want, you know, the way I want them to and not break. Mm. Um, and I'm not quite sure how to do that yet. So I am pondering that. Um, other than that, I'm like, 
I want to look at more ways to do water without, I'm not going to do satin stitch, no way, no how. Um, so I've got some ideas on how to experiment with some, some textiles to do them a little differently. I'm not going to do resin. Um, mirrors are a possibility because then those could be attached pretty well and then maybe covered with something. Blue. So I don't know. Um, mirrors could maybe... also be painted with like a transparent right. medium or yeah. like alcohol inks or something so that they look like they have waves on them. Barbara, if you're, if you're referring to um, painting a piece like this, it would be with fabric paint. Mm hmm Spray them with hairspray, maybe. Maybe, Yeah, maybe that's it. Maybe I should seal them first. You know, and I'm sure, you know, people have done it, and there's probably some um, articles about it. I just need to go search for them. Okay, I, the I think, like, um, like a, a matte sealant would work well because uh, hairspray over the long term may attract lint and dust. Uh, good point. Yeah. As as would um, Mod Podge. Mod Podge not is yeah, not. Well, I, I don't use Mod Podge. Not a fan, so I don't use that. Yeah. But I've got some matte sealers. That's a thought. Okay, Sandy says, "Is it against the fiber art law to use glue on sand dollars?" No, I mean, and you know, there's nothing wrong with gluing things onto your pieces. Um, I haven't had to do it yet, but the trouble is, you know, if even if I glue the backs like of a sand dollar or the backs of a starfish, you know, they're still pretty delicate. I don't, I think the whole thing would have to be coated with something. Um, I think before I glue down um, something like that, what I would do would um, be to glue a button shank to the back. Ah, that's a good point. But then you would still, the whole thing would have to be. Um, yeah. The whole thing would have to be coated. Uh yeah, Margaret, that's what um, Terry just said. You both have the same good idea, something on the back to hold them together. Barbara, you could paint fabric with a brush. You could paint it with um, squirt bottles. You could, I mean, any way that you can paint paper, you can paint fabric. Um, um, gla glass mirrors go to fabric with a um, technique called, I won't say it right, Shishka, S-H-I-S-K-A, I think it's called. And what they do, I won't be able to show you very well, but let's see, is it's a method of stitching it where you're going across each edge. And I can't, I can't do it with the bobbin, but basically you would see the threads at the edges and then the mirror would be open in the center. Kind of um, like a blanket stitch that. Yeah. Yeah, but you can bead like that too. You can yeah. do a beaded like netting around the outside edge. Right. You know, that can be narrow. Right. You no, know? uh, but do it in very tiny beads. So Roxy said, how long do you work on a problem in your art before you just move on or change it? Roxy's got great questions today. Thank you, oh, Roxy. Boy. You're helping a lot. Um, you know, it just, it depends. Um, if it's a piece like the, the wildscapes that I'm trying to finish the collection so that I can get the launch going, um, I just keep going at it. If it's something that just absolutely stumps me, like this thing I set aside probably for a month. Uh, and as long as I give myself the freedom to not worry that it has to be done in a certain time and nothing I'm doing has to be done in a certain time because I don't do commissions anymore. I just let it go as long as it takes. Okay, so this is just a little piece of netting and I can gather that up and tack that down and that's gonna give another element. But I think that's another one of those things that I will do at the end. So between that and the organza ribbon, that gives some nice little um, shiny stuff to it. Um, Barbara Cabrera um, commented bezeling and that's yeah. what they call the beaded edge to the end. Yeah. The, the um, oh, Margaret, that's a good idea. Adding some fine tool over the top, you would still see it fine. That's a good idea. Yep, yeah, it's one o'clock and it's time to uh, have some tea or something and relax a little bit. Thank you guys for hanging with me. I don't know if you can tell, you probably can't tell what I've done, but really there has been some progress made. And as soon as the rest of my ice yarn comes, I'm going to be doing a lot of French knots to fill this in. 
and then we'll get to the um, details. Oh, cinnamon toast sounds so good. This hour just flew by. Yes. Okay, Roxy, I'm going to remember that question for next time. What was the oddest thing to inspire you to make a piece? Because I'm going to have to ponder that one. Oh, yeah. Thanks for all the questions. Ah, oh, Hexy, sorry, we're just leaving. Um, Hi. You may or may not know about our time change because we did have daylight savings time kick in. All right, everybody, I will see you next week. See you in the Facebook group. And next Tuesday is our morning Zoom. So if you want to join, you can head over. Whoops, I can put the link for you one more time here. Oops. Um, there's the link. Oh, Sandy says, Sandy Fiona, says, if you're Fiona. here, I love you. Yes, Fiona, if you're lurking in the background, we love you and sending you well wishes. Thank yes. you, everybody. Um, thanks for the thumbs up. Thanks for sharing the channel and video and helping me grow. I really, really appreciate it. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.